having a um, happy hour. And guys, we work so hard, it's time to you know, relax a little bit. So we'd love to have you there. It's going to be a good time, a lot of networking, um, getting to uh, meet uh, the agents. And uh, you know, Bobby, he'll be there as well. Yeah. So we'd love to see you guys. Uh, my team is here as the in-house lender is here to help you in any way we can. Um, we, we do three things very well. We stay on top of pre-approvals. Uh, the clients until they get pre-approved, we stay in touch with the clients and keep you informed all through the process, and we close those on time. From first-time homebuyer programs to out-of-the-box programs. So anyway, hey Joe, just um, to make it easier, I'm going to mute everybody um, and just leave you unmuted. So give me one second. Yeah. I appreciate that. All right. Um, one second, Joe. I'm looking for you. Yeah, I got it. Okay, you perfect. Thank you. Yep, we can hear you crystal clear. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you. I appreciate that, Daniel. Was everybody able to hear what I said? I don't know if it was lost, but uh, anyway, would love to have you guys come join join us at the happy hour. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, time to relax. And um, it's going to be from four to seven at tap 42. I'd love to meet each and every one of you. And uh, again, our team is here to support you. Okay, I want you to know that. I tell this at every training, we're an extension of your office. We care very much about um, your brand and um, you know doing doing a good job for you because at the end of the day we're here to get to get referrals and continue to grow our business. So thank you, and I look forward to seeing you guys tonight. Joe, so thank you so much for that and always uh, presenting us with some fun options. I know that with, I, I'm all work and I tend not to <laughs> want to play, but this is fun and it's a great opportunity for us to mingle as agents and get to know each other. So it's a great opportunity. Um, I put the information there on the text. And I want to make sure uh, also to remind everybody that is not a London Foster agent, two things. First of all, we're going to be using a presentation. This presentation is located in our back office. So uh, you won't be having access to it. Reach out to me. My name is Memo. M-E-M-O, like a memo pad, at londonfoster.com. You can write me and I'll happily share the PowerPoint presentation with you. Um, that's number one. And number two, that as London Foster agents all know, we do the London Foster 101. It's an opportunity for you guys to find out more about London Foster. And again, this goes to the 35 people that are SVP'd for this training that are not London Foster agents. And for those of you that are new that want to participate again or again and again, you're always welcome. We do it four times a week. We do it Monday, Friday, and Saturday at noon. And tonight, Wednesday, we're actually doing one at 7 p.m. So it's a great opportunity for you to find out about the firm, see how we work, learn how to do your different processes. I see Marius is there. Wow, man, this is a really full room. <laughs> um, so I think it's just great that we're all here. And, uh, and I, I'm going to go ahead and, and put that in also in the chat. And without further ado, Ms. Marta Suarez just said hello. Without further ado, I'm going to turn this over uh, to Nanette. Nanette, before we finish this up, uh, I think Bobby wanted to say a couple of words. I don't know if he was able to log in yet, but I know he'll be here in a little bit. So uh, maybe we'll have like an inter intermezzo. Uh, okay, Nanette, so take it away. Thank you again, Nanette, for presenting once again an amazing training. Guys, if you are not muted, please mute yourself. It gets very noisy okay, when everybody's dog and cat and everything else. And and uh, um, one last thing. Oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry, Nanette. I'm sorry. Before I before we get started, guys, let me share my screen with you. I want to make sure that everybody can see where this presentation is in our back office. Can you guys see my screen, Nanette? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay, bear with me one second. Computer is temperamental to say the least. Okay. Okay, that didn't work too well. Of course that didn't work because I needed it to. We're seeing everyone's emails right now. I know, sorry guys. 
numbers. Sorry about that, guys. Let me try again. I'm going to try with my phone. Uh, basically, what you want to do to have a PowerPoint presentation is you want to log in. Can you see my screen now? No. Yes, sir. Okay, beautiful. So what you're going to do is you're going to log into LondonFoster.net. You're going to hit the hamburger. You're going to log in. You're going to hit the hamburger right here. You're going to click on education. Scroll all the way to the bottom. And you're going to see that there's an as is purchase contract. Okay. Lynette, you're sharing your screen. Yes. Yeah, but you can't share your screen until I finish. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Give me a second, guys. Let me try again. Got it. Try again. Okay. Let me try one more time. Okay. So, guys, you're going to hit here the hamburger. Can everybody see my screen? Yes. Uh... Yes, sir. No, your screen's not showing on us. Uh, okay. We're right here. Uh, yeah, now it is. What about now? Okay, beautiful. Now it is. So you're, you're going to log into LondonFoster.net. Okay. You're going to click the little hamburger. You're going to log in. You're going to click the little hamburger up top. Hit education. Scroll all the way to the bottom where you see the as is purchase contract page. You're going to see this presentation right here. And here you'll be able to download the PDF or the PowerPoint. Uh, in a few days, Daniel will be have, we're recording this training. So Daniel will add the training with an icon here. But in the meantime, this is what the presentation looks like. And you guys should be able to follow along. So you don't have to take any notes. And then that's gonna cover all of this beautiful material. Okay? Um, okay, Ms. Nanette, I'm, before we get started, I'm sorry, Nanette, one last thing. I just wanna make sure to give Bobby a chance to say, hey, I just heard him. I couldn't see him, but I heard him. Yeah, I'm actually here right here on Luna's uh, computer because my computer was, uh, uh, I have some issues with it, but uh, I'm okay. right here. So Bobby, take it away for a few. Yeah, we're both at the uh, at the Kindle office here, and um, I, I wanted to say, uh, you know, thank you for coming to this uh, uh, training. Uh, this is a very successful training. I, I especially want to say thank you to Nanette, uh, uh, blessing us with her wisdom and her experience, and uh, you know, spreading the love of London Foster with uh, you know the experience that she has and that she has uh, um, gained among the years, and 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 helping us, you know, along the way. She's um, uh, very, very smart when it comes to these contracts and the details. And she herself has experienced a lot of these, uh, uh, you know, situations that she can shed a lot of light uh, on and give you much better perspective. Um, as you know, you know, this is, uh, we're not attorneys, we're not giving legal advice, but this is just something that we're doing to help um, give you better perspective on the contracts and try to help explain uh, you know, the, 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 the best perspective of these contracts and the changes um, as they occur. Uh, these things don't happen frequently. So you see like this happened. I don't know when was it? I think it was like about what, six years ago or five years ago before the, the last uh, update. So this is why it's really important. And, uh, and uh, you know, this is one of Nanette's um, uh, niches that, that she's really good at. Like, a, uh, But um, uh, in addition to that, um, I want to thank everyone again for coming here um, not only today, but uh, I don't know if Joe had a chance to talk that, you know, explaining that we had that um, uh, we have the happy hour uh, later tonight at the um, uh, uh, at uh, near the Aventurum um, office in the uh, I, I think it's at the Tap 42. Tap 42, that yes, yeah, at the Aventurum Mall. And uh, that's going to be a lot of fun. And I'm uh, excited to also announce that we um, uh, we're having our annual Christmas holiday party. Um, coming up in December, um, so we're really excited about that. I don't know if uh, any of you guys you know if you came to our past holiday parties, but there ain't no party like a London Foster holiday party. I can tell you that. So um, it's going to be a lot of fun. You know, it's going to be uh, open bar and it's going to be uh, enjoyable and you know all uh, only for us London Foster agents to celebrate the year and uh, and the holidays together as a family because we're you know I like to refer to us as a London Foster family so we're happy about that um, again we have some uh, other updates coming down the line before the year we will be releasing our London Foster back office 2.0 which is amazing it's great we're so excited about it because we've been working on this in the background for the past uh, 
almost 12 months for the past year since January. So um, I won't take up any more time. Uh, thanks, Memo, Daniel, uh, Joe, Nanette. Uh, thanks uh, to all of you guys for uh, contributing to your career. This is contributing to your career. So I'll pass it over to Danette. Uh, thanks again, and uh, wish you guys the best. Have a great day, and uh, hopefully see you tonight. Okay, I'm going to pass it over to you, Nanette. Thank you, Bobby. Sure, thanks, Nanette. I appreciate it. Great. Just one last thing, everybody, if you are not unmuted, I mean, if you're not muted, please mute yourself. So, Daniel, if you could just mute everybody who wants to talk. Then there you go. Hi, everybody. Okay, can you hear me, everybody? Yes, ma'am. Everybody can hear me? Okay. Welcome everybody, we're going to jump right into the new uh, revised edition of our as is purchase contract. Again, this is just the as is so I wanted to make sure everybody um, is aware this is the as is contract, the one that we're supposed to be using for the most part, when we have our buyers and sellers. Um, this was revised on October 21st, 2021, and went into effect on November 1st. So again, if you're using the old contract, you need to set that one aside upgrade and put this one into your paperwork. So this is the one we're going to move forward with. Um, this uh, revised edition was done by the Florida Realtors and the Florida Bar. So this is our, our legal contract that we're supposed to be using with all from November 1st. Um, I'm going to go along and point out the changes. I'll give you the page number, 12 pages as it was originally. And I'm going to give you the page number that follow along. And also, I'm going to give you the line numbers that are we're going to be speaking about. So uh, we're going to again jump right in. If you have any questions, please uh, use so in the text. We'll try to get to everybody at the end, but we have a lot of information to go over. And um, again, ask any questions to the chat room and we'll try to go over them at the end. Um, so let's start. Again, this is as of 1021, it'll be at the corner of the contract of each page. So here we go. What's this? Things aren't right here. Daniel, do we have um, the contract up? I'm not seeing it here. Yeah, Nanette, you're in the wrong section. Yeah, I just pulled up. Um, I'll send you the link via email, okay? Yeah, I have it here. So. Why is it asking me for my name and everything here? You're Sorry, clicking on the reservation to RSVP for the event. You're not clicking on the actual contract. Yeah, go back, go back. Sorry about that, guys. I thought we were already in here. Back to the email. No, no. Close that off. Okay. Okay, this is this is something else. I'll send it to you via email, okay? Okay, thank you. Sorry, guys. Um, just so you know, we're going to start with uh, page one of the contract, and we're going to talk about um, the changes on page one, line 15 to 20. So until we get that moved up, we're going to go ahead and move on, um, and we'll follow along. So the first change that we have is to do with um, the personal property. So it's on page page one, and it's line 15 to 20. And that the email has upset. What's that? I sent you the email. Thanks. Oh, I don't see it. Yeah, for some reason I don't have it here. I'm sorry. I still don't have it, Memo. Okay, now then I'm gonna send it to you via text in the in the chat. Okay, so click on the chat. Oh, here it is. Got it. Sorry. All right. Can everybody see that now? You can click on the icon. There you go. Okay. Perfect. Okay. 
So again, if you guys want to look this up online, it's going to be on Form Simplicity. You can go to Form Simplicity. And again, look at the lower left-hand corner. You're going to write the 2021 revision for the contract. And also, um, we're going to be able to have it uploaded to our site at LondonFoster.net, as um, Memo talked about. So I'm going to move and then on. Try, to try hitting, okay, if, if you go back to the email. Mm -hmm. Can you see it? Email, yeah, if you, if you go back to the email and you click on the icon, I think it'll be more visible. Go back to the email. Okay, click on, you see down there where it says download and the little download thing? No, 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 no. Go back. You see the little download icon? Hover above it. Hover above it, Nanette. Above the icon. Okay, you see that little arrow pointing down? Oh, yeah, there you yeah. go. So it's just going to be larger. Yeah. Sorry about this. All right, we're ready to go. Oh my gosh. Ridiculous. Nanette, make it bigger. You see that little square on the right hand, upside, upside, up, 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 all the way on the right. There you go, the little square. There you go. Okay. Click on enable editing. Okay, so it's found on uh, floridarealtors.org law ethics. And um, it also will give you the contract if you're looking at it redlined, which just shows the changes. So again, we're gonna go on to the actual changes. Um, personal property. The first change on our contract is the personal property. Again, it's page one of the contract, one of 12, and it's line 15 to 20. Um, they have added thermostats, doorbells, television wall mounts, which is this important television mounting hardware, security gates and other access. The mailbox keys have been added, which I don't know if any of you've already done uh, foreclosures, but almost never you get mailbox keys with that or evictions. So they have added the mailbox keys so the sellers are responsible for um, uh, supplying mailbox keys. Storm shutters, storm protection. And the one thing they deleted because uh, most people don't have them any longer are intercoms. So this is the big change. Again, this is line 18 through 20. On the, uh, on the contract. Um, one thing to point out uh, is the hardware, the television mounting hardware. A lot of times people will take the television with the mounting hardware. If you have anything that the seller does not want to convey, that's one of those items, there is the section that you want to write below that that says things to be excluded from the contract, which you could write in. Say if they did want to take the television mounting hardware, you could write that in. If they wanted to take their ring doorbell camera, they can take it but obviously you wanna put in things that are excluded and, and write the personal property in. Basically anything that's attached to the wall, um, the appliances and any of these things, that's why they've updated um, all these information on here because it's also attached to your wall. So now those things have been added. Um, so I'm gonna go a little bit quickly because we're behind. So um, if you have any questions again, Let's go over it at the end and also we'll have this presentation for you, available for you. Um, the next thing is paragraph four. This is still on page one and um, this is the closing date. They changed the wording. It still says closing date so someone can easily find on the contract closing date. It used to just say closing and now it says paragraph four closing date. Um, the date um, is going to be set, which you're gonna see this, by the closing agent, not by the agents. So although you'll be able to write in your date that you hope to be your closing date, as we know, because mortgages have gotten behind, appraisals have gotten behind, transfer of money has gotten long, a lot slower since um, the start of COVID for the last two years. So um, this has been changed. So you always wanna make sure that you stay in contact with your closing agent and, and get the wording that's um, when they're going to say and get an email uh, stating the closing date. So not the seller. So this is the big difference on here. Again, that's on page one. It's uh, pages 50 to 52. Um, the next thing we're going to talk about is the extension of the closing date. Again, because of everything that's happened with COVID um, and delays and um, mortgages, closings, documents, they've now decided instead of the 10 days, which was on our old contract, they've changed it to seven days. So the very important thing is in the event that the closing has to be changed because of a closure, 
or a delay, um, then the paragraph eight has been changed. The loan approval has been obtained and the underwriting is complete. Again, this has been changed. It's a small change, but it's an important change from 10 days to seven days. Um, let's see. And this is uh, also on uh, page one. So we're moving on down to the next one. Um, if the property is subject to lease, so this is also very important. Um, and they changed seasonal rentals and short-term vacation rentals are now included, which they were not on our old contract. So this is on uh, line 72 to 76 of the contract. And again, the line numbers, you guys should all be aware of this, the line numbers are on the left-hand column and you can just scroll down the line numbers on the contract to see. So it's 72 to 76, they've added um, seasonal rentals and short-term vacation rentals. We're gonna speak about this and when we get to the addendum, they did add a short-term and vacation addendum to the contract. And we'll talk about that at the end because this has become very important lately. Um, we do have a lot of uh, properties that are in hotel situations and condos that now have uh, agreements. Uh, so it will be affected by this. But anyway, we, we have added on the contract uh, occupancy if it's seasonal or non-seasonal. Um, and we'll talk about that a little bit later when we get to the addendum. So, but it does include the short term and long term. Um, assignability, the assignability has been um, left pretty much blank by many of the agents who do the contract. But really, uh, in my opinion, you should never leave this uh, area blank. Um, there's three choices that you have to have. You may be assigned and be released. Uh, you may assign but not be released from liability or may not assign. If for any reason you have left this blank, it, it cannot be assigned to another person. Um, people wonder why assignability is on the contracts. For instance, if somebody buys it and they want to open an LLC or change it to an LLC, this gives you the ability on the contract to change it to an LLC. However, it can get a little tricky if you are not a cash purchase or a, a cash buyer if um, you have any kind of um, assignability as far as changing the loan on the property. If you have an approval process to go through for an association, this can be a little tricky. So again, if it's left blank, you always wanna choose whichever one. If they're gonna change it to an LLC, you will need to make sure that you can change it. But also if you do not check it, it will automatically be defaulted to the buyer may not assign the contract. And this is on line 85. Um, we're still working with the first page. Um, let's see what else. Next, we're moving on to financing. The biggest part of the changes for the whole new contract has to do with financing. And these are things if you go to the happy hour tonight, you may have questions for Jeff. But um, there are a lot of... Okay, so the biggest changes have to do with the financing. So I encourage everybody to read the financing paragraphs. Um, they changed this to read that it's either cash, period, it's either a cash transaction or it's gonna be financing. They deleted all the information that you'll see with red lines here, the buyer will pay cash for the purchase. So this has all been deleted. And so we either have two choices now, not three, we have either cash, or we have financing. And we'll go over those sections uh, a little bit more clearly, but there are a lot of information on that's changed on the financing. I encourage all of you to read line by line this information. This is line number 88 that deleted um, that other option. Um, again, this has been a lot of changes on this part. So it includes the appraisal is now included. The appraisal process is included in the financing period. So used to, we would have like 30 to 45 days for our, our um, loan approval period, because again, some of the loans have been delayed and um, may not happen. Some of the appraisals have been delayed. It's now three to four weeks sometimes for an appraisal to get done, which may fall outside of your normally scheduled financing period. Uh, the change has been done to put the appraisal inside that loan approval period. So you must have a loan approval if it's necessary um, for, the, for the contracts to be included in that 30 days. Um, so this is on um, paragraph eight. We're gonna look at these individually moving forward. Uh, 
paragraph 8B, um, the contract is contingent with 30 days if left blank. I'm to the feeling that you should never leave anything blank because you can always, if you need more time, ask for an extension on the loan period. So, um, but if you do leave it blank, it's 30 days. And again, the loan approval period now includes the appraisal process. And if you skip down to the language in red, it says received an appraisal or alternative valuation of property. So this is really, really important. If this is not filled out and if the um, buyer does not keep the seller updated on the mortgages and the uh, approval process, uh, you would also, obviously the seller is, um, he would be upset if the loan process wasn't done and the buyer would risk losing uh, some of their deposits. So this is a very important section to read over and make sure that you have this filled out properly. Um, all right, let's move on to the next one. Um, the appraisal, again, just what I said, the appraisal is now included in uh, line 94 here. It's now included in the um, process. So why the changes? Because some lenders don't require appraisals now and some lenders are accepting a different valuation product. So this is very important. Um, on the definition of loan approval, um, the loan approval, the financing approved and satisfactory appraiser done by the lending. This is the change is line number 98 to 101. And the loan approval, which requires the buyer to sell a property will be considered loan approval. So again, read over this. If you have a client who is a buyer who's doing financing, these loan period timetables are very important so he doesn't lose his deposit. Um, they changed a lot of the information and a lot of the writing to always be on written request. So, um, and this has been kind of a thing that's changed with social media and uh, the writers and the legal um, lawyers have added language into the contract that says everything must be in writing. Um, everything that you do must be in writing. And the correspondence should be, you have four choices. You either have by email, you have uh, by personal, um, uh, personal, um, uh, when you give the person, uh, sorry, um, just personal request. And also when you um, email, but text and phone calls are not accepted in any kind of communication on our contracts any longer. So everything needs to be done in an email and they still have fax on it, which is a little bit outdated, but you can do email, you can do fax, you can do personal um, in person. Um, to correspond to all your information. As far as the loan approval, you need to stay in contact and make sure that the buyer is staying in contact with his loan officer and making sure that the loan officer is aware of the dates that are um, on the contract. Very important. Um, the new items are having to do with line 106 to 108 and 110. And they include the seller must make the written request to the buyer for status updates. So used to, at least on the contracts I've worked on, you know, the agent would reach out to the other agent and say, how are we doing? Do we have the appraisal back? Do we have a loan commitment yet? And some of the terms could be vague. And that's why they're asking for everything to be in writing. And the seller must make this written request from the buyer. So it's not the buyer giving this information. Um, also, you need to make sure that the notification of the property conditions of the loan approval. Say if um, on the appraisal, it came back that the roof wasn't, um, uh, according to the loan, if it's an FHA or VA loan, uh, they, or it didn't meet the wind mitigation, um, you need to make sure that this notification is being um, done on the contracts to move forward and make sure that there, that is included in the loan process. The bottom line is you want to make sure that there is nothing holding up your loan and that you're on schedule within that loan period for everything to be approved. We don't want any surprises. One of the reasons they did a lot of these changes was to simplify our contract. It's still 12 pages, which it was before, but they've tried to make it more uh, concise and to make sure there's no gray areas of the contract. And this is part of that. Um, if the loan approval period, um, this is paragraph 8B, uh, line 111 to 114. Um, it, the new part is that you can proceed without approval if the buyer believes he will get the approval. And so if the person knows, for instance, if the approval hasn't been given, but they have extra cash or they have other means uh, to make this transaction go through, then they need to make sure that 
it's still in writing and the seller's confirming and the buyer's confirming that the loan appear to approve it is still good. If you need extra time, and a lot of people have asked, if you do need extra time, uh, you can always ask the seller and as long as the seller and the buyer um, agree, uh, stay in contact with the loan officer and make sure if you need extra time, you can always add extra time or ask for extra time um, for this approval period to be extended. So it's always an option with um, an addendum. Um, why did they do this language and why is it new? Because terminated the contract if the buyer can't timely meet the terms of the loan approval, will put the property back on the market. So um, again, this is line 115 to 119. So the buyer, if the buyer does not contact the seller in writing and tell them that their uh, loan has been approved or if they need extra time to move forward, the buyer could risk losing their deposit. So again, uh, I encourage all of you to re uh, read the approval uh, period and read the um, loan financing because that's many of the changes of this contract have to do with the loan approvals. Okay, um, again, just what I said, if the buyer fail, fails to timely deliver, they could risk losing their, um, their deposit. If they do move forward, then it's considered a cash transaction and they would have to bring cash to close, to close with this property if they didn't want to uh, risk losing their deposit. So if they wanna keep the contract as is and buy the property, they definitely have to make sure that they're within the loan period. Okay, still more information about the loan approval. The other changes are line 126 to 127 and 129. If notice of loan approval was obtained or that the buyer intended to obtain the loan approval, but and close, no closing deposit goes to the seller unless the failure to disclose is done. The low appraisal no longer in deposit going back to the buyer at closing. Appraisal is not a property related condition. And this is a huge change. Of all the changes in the financing, I think this is the biggest change. Um, the appraisal used to be a reason that they could cancel. That's no longer a property related condition. So it's very important that you pay attention to the appraisal and the appraisal is done within that loan period if you're using 30 to 45 days. Um, okay, so we're moving on from the financing and we're gonna get, be going to this section, line 141 and it's paragraph 9A. So the changes here have to do with FERPTA and FERPTA is the foreign tax um, liability that any owner, so this has to do with the seller, obviously. The seller is responsible for any charges for FERPTA withholding and reporting. So obviously this is really important. This was added to the contract. This was never there before. So if you look under the cost to be paid by seller, this is gonna be on line 141, the section that is added to our um, 9A section. And again, it only applies if the seller is a foreign person, does not apply if the buyer, it doesn't matter if the buyer is a foreign person, only if the seller. Okay, paragraph 9C, um, this has to do with the title company, the Miami-Dade Regional Provision. So it says buyer shall designate closing agent. This is one of the changes. It clarifies that the buyer designates the closing agent and they pay for the title insurance premium. And again, it has the section where they not pay over $200 if you wanna add the $200 there. Um, it's commonly the way everybody has been doing it, but this just makes sure that everybody is aware that it's there, that the buyer, if the buyer is going to um, designate the closing agent, they pay for the title premium, title insurance premium. So this changes again on line 174, um, the survey. Surveys happen usually when there is it's a commercial property or you have a residential single family home. Usually surveys are not done on condos. So this is specifically um, on our contract because the contract, as you know, works for single family homes or it works for condos. So uh, the survey has to be done at least five days prior to the closing date if there's a survey that's needed. And again, this usually deals with single family homes. So this is located on line 181. And the timing change, the reason they did this is because it enables the surveyor to see the title work and all the information to make sure that the, um, the uh, property survey is completed. Okay, moving on, special assessments. There's always a question about special assessments. People get confused with special assessments for condos at condo associations 
but this special assessment section on line 196 to 198 specifically deals with um, special assessments done by public bodies. Public bodies will be uh, the water company, the sewer companies, the um, uh, city that it may be located in, if it's a flood zoned area. So there's different things that have to deal with special assessments um, uh, that the cities or the, the zip codes, for instance, have special assessments. Um, and this is done in not for condos. This section does not deal with condo special assessments, which a lot of people think it does. But the big change here, the line number is 196 to 198. Um, they've changed that the seller shall pay the assessments in full at the time of closing. So the change here is for any special assessments, which the public body, being the city, county, whatever it is, does not allow prepayment, which paid in full, then option A, which is seller pay installments, is the one that is selected. So again, this is 196 to 198 and has to do with public assessments, not condo assessments. And this revision was made necessary when the full payment is not um, when they don't know. Some of these things, the cities um, have, they just don't know what it's going to cost because they haven't done the complete completion of the work, so they allow for prepayments. And it also gives the cities and the counties an opportunity to raise the payment uh, amount, depending on, on when it was done or how much they have to do on it. So anyway, line 196 to 198, again, it's been changed. If you read the information in red, the seller shall pay in full, or they can, uh, if they do not allow it, the city or the county does not allow a prepayment, then they pay a prorated amount. Okay, moving on to paragraph nine, special assessments continued. Again, this has to do with CDDs, which are community development districts. Um, special assessments imposed by these cities, counties um, are prorated. So line 200 to 201. Again, this is not special assessments on condos or homeowner associations. All right, um, line 259, property maintenance. Um, ordinary wear and tear, uh, the seller is obviously responsible for keeping this up, uh, but not limited to lawn, shrubbery, pool, and, and um, the lawn, basically, um, and pools. This just wants to make sure if somebody goes into contract saying they have a 30 to 45 day closing, that the seller is um, supposed to maintain the property until closing, through closing. They just can't let the pool turn green. They can't uh, let the lawn go and let the shrubbery get out of control. The seller is responsible for keeping the, the property um, maintained other than wear and tear, which you know would be the inside, I guess, for wear and tear, but otherwise the outside needs to be maintained, line 259. Um, paragraph 18, time. Um, it's always been on our contract that time is of the essence, but the big change here has to do on line 432, uh, 436 to 438. So, it's not the time which somebody may be uh, in California buying the property or they may be out of the country. So the time is always given now based on where the property is located. Again, this is put here in an effort to make sure that everybody is on the same page as far as time goes, calendar days. As we know, if you're in another country or um, you may have a difference in time of 12 to 24 hours, so this just makes sure that wherever the property is located, that's the time that we're talking about when things are due. And these have to do with uh, escrow of payments done, closing dates, um, any of the times that we have for uh, inspection periods. This is to do with closing date. So all of this is done wherever the property is located. Um, they just move time of the essence also to the top of, of the page. So people know that it's most important and make sure they read the first line. Sometimes people get lost down through the language. There's so much of it. So they're trying to move a lot of the things to the top line on it or to the paragraph. Um, this is line 432 again. Um, observation of holidays. This is very um, important. And this is a big change on the contract too. If we have a holiday, and we have a holiday coming up, which is Thanksgiving. So obviously Thursday is Thanksgiving. So Friday is a legal holiday. So you would move to the next Monday on, on a date of a calendar. So if you have a national legal holiday, which is observed, and you can get a list of those right from uh, the legal holidays 
you can go right to um, probably any calendar and find legal public holidays listed, but also the Florida realtors have the legal holidays that are recognized for this purpose. Uh, our contracts used to end at five o'clock, uh, a business day. It now goes to 11.59 p.m. on our time. So uh, that's just been a change. It's no longer 5 p.m. So they struck that out. And again, if it's on a calendar day and a holiday is observed, it fell on a Saturday or Sunday, we go to the next day that is not considered a holiday. So the time zone, observance of holidays and no five o'clock cutoff. Okay, um, this is just an example of the holidays. If we have the holidays, we can go through the example. Again, I just gave one. So we have uh, Thanksgiving coming up. So Thanksgiving is on Thursday. So we would skip Thursday. Friday is a legal holiday observed. And we'd move the uh, Saturday, Sundays excluded. And we move to the next Monday for the closing. So um, this has been a big um, area, the force majeure, which has changed, uh, obviously, because of COVID. Um, a lot of things have changed, but this has basically uh, been added um, to uh, this uh, standard G. So it's line 439 to 440 through 442. Um, I'm going to go to the next page because it gives you an example, a better example. So obviously here is COVID-19 is included. This includes now earthquakes, hurricanes, floods, extreme weather, acts of God, unusual transportation days, wars, insurrections, civil unrest. So all of this has been added. So um, I think between the buyer and the seller and the title company, you should be able to work out if they're going to be open or if there's not. A big issue here comes to banks, if they're transferring money, lending companies, if they're shut down and they're not located in the same city, for instance, if we have a hurricane here in Florida, it may affect us, but it may not affect um, the banks where the money is being transferred from. It may not be um, um, affecting the lending company where the money is coming from, but whatever we need to do to make sure that everybody is on the same page, this has been added here to cover just about anything that might happen. Um, and again, it's a sign of the times with COVID-19, they've had to add this and it was a needed change. Um, this is done on line 443 to 444. So obviously it was expanded because of the current condition, conditions that we're in. Um, this just goes on to say that the, the event will be deemed to have begun on the first day of the effective date and performance uh, prevents performance of insurances. Um, again, title companies being open, banks being opened, uh, uh, lenders being open and able to um, do their business. So uh, this is line 446 to 447. Uh, a perfect example of this, I had a situation where the electricity was off because of a hurricane for the title company. We weren't, allowed, we weren't able to close because the title company was closed. The bank was closed where uh, the money was being transferred. Again, this is what extensions are for and addendums are for. So um, they have given an ex extension on here in a time period but obviously you could write your own addendum for your area. Um, I mean, what happens in Fort Lauderdale as far as hurricanes may not happen where Miami is, but as long as the buyer, the seller, the title company, uh, the uh, everybody is on board, the financing company is on board, um, we need to make sure everybody via email or via phone, um, we have to make sure that everybody's on the same page for, for things to happen properly. And if addendums are needed, this is when we get our addendums that the contract has added the language um, to make sure that this is okay. Um, prorations. Um, this is on line 492 to 493, the prorations and the credits. Um, they have been prorated as the date prior to the day of closing. And this is Florida statute. So this isn't anything the realtors can take care of uh, or change. The real estate taxes, tax benefits, et cetera, any of the special assessments we've talked about from uh, the CD, CDDs are here. And this is um, on line 492 to 493. Uh, everything will be prorated and not negotiated. So again, uh, this comes into play, especially when taxes are concerned. Everybody's always um, arguing, well, I don't wanna pay that tax. I don't wanna pay that special assessment. But basically they've tried to simplify it and make sure that everything is prorated properly down to the date of closing. 
Um, again, this is a clarification to make sure that we know that social media, I brought this up before, texts are excluded. You cannot text social media posts or other electronic means is not going to happen on our contracts now and shouldn't have been in the first place. But you, the only delivery that you can legally make on our contracts now is by mail, email, obviously, by fax, if people are still using fax, personal delivery or email. So we have regular mail, um, fax, personal delivery or email. We cannot um, do our contracts via text. Uh, you can't, for instance, especially on the financing period, it's very important. I know it's very easy for all of us to text. We've gotten used to it. A lot of people don't like to pick up the phone any longer. A lot of people don't want to personal delivery, but all of our contracts to be legally enforceable have to be done by mail, fax, personal delivery, email only. No texting to make any changes, especially when it comes to the financing periods or anything else. 532, and it's a very important change on the contract. Uh, the addendums. So they've only added two of the addendums, but I think both of them are very important. Um, the seasonal vacation rentals, if you go down to um, the section here where it says D, this is important, and I'm going to read this out to you. We don't have it here, but I'm going to read this out for everyone. And you can find this addendum. You should. If you have any properties that are seasonal or vacation rentals uh, in hotel programs, in any kind of programs that people use seasonal or vacational, uh, this addendum is to protect both the buyer and seller from these situations that they know where contracts may be with uh, third vendors. A property manager, a realtor, a hotel may have a um, contract in place that the seller or the owner of the property has done for one year that they're going to be leasing it out in the hotel program. This addendum is to cover that. So uh, it says on it, the comprehensive writer for residential sale and, pro and um, of property. And again, it's dated 1021, which on the date for the new contracts, it'll say 1021, which it went into effect November 1st. But anyway, it is to um, property is or may be subject to seasonal or short-term vacational rentals. You have two choices on the seasonal vacation rental. You can either check A or B, and A says that the seller may or may not have a vacation. They give the third parties a contract. If you have the contract with a hotel or if an agent or some kind of property management company, that information and that contract has to be supplied to the new buyer. Contract is still they're responsible for um, living out. Um, the seller shall at copy of the new or renewal agreements for occupation and at closing. So you, these documents have to be uh, given. It's just similar to a lease. If you were to have a property that's leased, you're responsible for handing over that lease. Um, so with short terms, you're uh, responsible for handing over those vacation rentals and seasonal rental contracts that you might have. Um, and A on section B says that the property has seasonal occupancy agreements in place, um, then, then you're responsible, the seller's responsible for handing over all those contracts as well. So this again has to do with hotel programs and if you have any um, seasonal or vacation or rentals. For instance, um, there's two new forms that are here, the case. Pace disclosure. Any of you are probably asking yourself, what is a pace? What is pace? I've never heard of that. It's if the property is assessed. So there are certain areas in our districts that are um, have clean energy addendums, uh, which should be addressed to them. And if they have an energy efficient, renewable energy and wind resistance. If somebody has entered into a mortgage and they have a pace addendum in their mortgage, the mortgage company is responsible for, and you as the seller and the agent for the seller have the buyer know that this is a PACE property, and that's where this addendum comes in and um, um, has to be submitted. So there are certain assessments, and this again is a Florida statute that has to do with renewable energy, energy efficiency, or wind resistance. 
So PACE stands for Property Assessed Clean Energy, and that addendum is also available on our LondonFoster.net on our uh, programs and our addendums there, and we'll upload it with our new uh, contract changes. So uh, let's see what else. Moving on, both of those. Oh, this is another thing. Uh, the counter offer or rejection. So they have removed the need for the counter offer. So uh, the, the rejection offer. So the only thing that's now on our contract is the counter offer. So the seller can counter the offer, but you do not have to ever give an offer rejection any longer. A lot of agents, when they submit offers, they always ask in writing and always ask for this, but um, they have actually removed this provision because sellers are not required to reject in writing any offers. Um, so again, the only choice you're gonna have now, they remove that choice completely from the bottom of the contract. Um, the only offer is that the seller counters the buyer is the only thing you have to fill out here on, the, on that part. Um, specific revisions for the regular residential contract. We are not gonna be going over this. We're just gonna go over as is contract. So um, again, that concludes all the changes for the as is. And I wanted to see a uh, memo. Can you hear me? Can you come back on and see if there's any questions that we wanna answer? Yeah, we had a few questions and um, okay. I'll read them to you. And, okay. And if, and, if, and if you would like T. Bernie, um, to reiterate your question. Okay. Saying, are you saying that we should always choose B for special assessments now instead of A? So I know that that was further back in your presentation. Yeah, and yeah, I'll go to that part. No, not necessarily. Um, if there may not be any. So it may be, and these special assessments, again, we're not talking about the condo rider, and I just want to bring that up. We're not talking about the condo rider. We're talking about if there's a special uh, tax levied in a certain city or something. But if you leave it blank, then it will have to be prorated. So it depends on the city or the uh, community that you're in, if they will allow the seller to uh, pay it in advance. What the change has done has just uh, said, if they don't allow it, then uh, it has to be uh, prorated. So um, no, that's still a choice that you'll make, but it depends really on the city or the, where the property is located. Be paid in full. That's still a part of the association and your price. For instance, if you know that they're putting new sewers in, for instance, I have a they have Bay Harbor Islands has assessed Bay Harbor and on our property assessment, our property taxes have been raised for this assessment to put in new sewer lines there. So, and it gives you a, a on your property, on my tax ID number, it gives me an amount that I have to pay for that uh, sewer line to be put in. So I could either pay that amount up front or it's negotiable um, because Bay Harbor Islands does allow you to pay that in proration or I pass it on to the new, go into my final uh, contract price if I wanted to pay that up front as a negotiating factor. So no, I'm not saying that, but it does depend on if the city if you have a property listing, you want to find out if there is any special assessments or the seller, if they know of anything. I happen to know that one in Bay Harbor Island, so that's why I brought that up. But um, this doesn't have anything to do, just to reiterate, doesn't have anything to do with the, so, and those still can be negotiated as well, just so you know. I hope yes, I uh, thanks. I, I'm definitely clear that this has nothing to do with the condo writer or condo association. Okay. Okay. Um, but I think where it gets a little bit challenging is I think that um, on the very last page, you know, making sure to click off seller's property disclosure, but it puts yep. a weird onus on us to know literally what's going on in a new municipality. So is that supposed to be proactive by the listing agent or not? And how do you very yeah. clearly advised because it seemed like the safest protection was always to click, you know, A, that they have to do it, um, which used to be on or before closing. But I'm not clear when I'm looking at these two exactly what the difference is and what I should be advising because I feel like it's murky territory for me to now become responsible for what's the latest and greatest update on a municipality. 
Right. I would default back to the seller on this, and it's the seller's responsibility. Remember, this isn't our contract. This is a seller and buyer's contract. So the seller will probably know um, if if they know anything about their property, just like I was sent something in my taxes from Bay Harbor saying this is your responsibility to pay this. So as an owner, um, if they have this, and the owner, it will owner actually the seller to find out if they can pay that in full if it has to be paid in full if it can be or if it can be as a seller they would want to prorate it but if the city doesn't allow it to be prorated and they say everybody has to pay for example um five thousand dollars then everybody has to pay the five thousand dollars and they don't allow it to move forward as a as a payment so uh, again i would uh, let it fall back on my seller and the, the seller's disclosure, if they know about it, I, I wouldn't take it on as an agent to find out if, if there's been anything imposed on the property or not. It sounds like your perspective that may be coming from being the listing agent, but I tend to focus most of the time as being a buyer's agent. So um, let's clarify that because I'm trying to be clear on what the onus is for me, who is writing an offer, um, the most pr protective purview for my buyer. From your buyer, I would look up to their. Uh, I would look up the tax information. I'd go right to if it's in Dade County, a tax thing, and see what the taxes are, and look on the tax form, and you can see right there they're listed. If there's any special assessments due on it, they're they're listed. It, it will say this is in. Um, it usually will have an other fee on it. It'll say what your taxes are, your school taxes, or this tax or that tax. It will show them what it is on there. So this doesn't happen a lot. Um, with the special assessments on uh, the CDCs, but you know they are there every now and then. But you can look on the tax roll and find out information. So, and if I have to, if I were the buyer, I, I maybe call you know where the property is located and call the say, hey, is there any the tax assessor in that district and find out. The buyer could call as the buyer's agent if you wanted to be proactive, you could. But you know if you don't want to get involved in it and be responsible. So I always put it on my buyers and sellers to do their due diligence. That's their due diligence period. That's right, not right, due diligence. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay, yeah, then I, I just wanted to... Uh, can you... Uh, hey, Bobby. Bobby? Yeah, I'm sorry. I think I'm... Yeah, okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. We. Well, yeah, I just wanted to say that that's really important to... Well, what you just emphasized, which is... Uh, that um, it's up to the to, to the buyers and the sellers to do the due diligence. It's just up to help. You know, we can't advise. Uh, you, you don't really advise, uh, Bernie. It's it's kind of uh, you know it's 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 you got to be very careful with that because you know we're just putting together. We always have to default back. Okay, let's look at the bigger picture. We uh, as the brokers and agents, we just bring the buyer together with the seller, and uh, you know they're responsible ultimately for doing their due due, due diligence. Um, so it, what's more important is uh, aggressively and clearly stating that it's important for you to do your due diligence in this matter, whether it's an assessment, whether it's uh, uh, issues with the, um, with the municipality or anything like that. So just keep that in mind. That's very important. Yes, we want to help, but we have to be careful of not going down rabbit holes when we do help because it, it gets very tricky. And then, you know, when something happens, you're already deep in that rabbit hole and they're like, you know, pointing fingers at, at, at us. So um, remember everyone, when, when, when the proverbial shit hits the fan, everybody points fingers to everyone else except themselves. So we just gotta be careful with that. I just wanted to plug that in. Yeah, yeah another question, Daniel? Um, well, we have Nathan Robinson has his hand up. Did you still wanna ask your question? <laughs> Okay. Nathan, did you still want to um, ask your question? Okay, let me check the uh, chat one last time. Um, I have a question. Ahead. Yeah, go ahead. This is Diane Husto. I have a question about the loan approval. Mm -hmm. Everything, let's say everything goes fine. Um, again, I'm looking at, I have a buyer. Mm -hmm. And there's always that final underwriting list that they get mm -hmm. it appraised everything's fine property is fantastic but they have personal final underwriting little things to meet how mm -hmm. do we handle that because 
it can happen that maybe the financing, the person doesn't lose their job, but something happened and all of a sudden they don't get their loan because they personally cannot find financially pay the loan. How do we handle it? It may not fall within the loan approval period. That's why you have to pay. Everybody has to be very, very clear about this. That's why it's important. It's you just stay in touch and be on the same page. And that's kind of why they put this information in there because they need everything in right time and they don't talk about it. the underwriter is asking now for you know one last piece of paper, one last piece of paper, one last piece of paper. And that always happens. That's specifically why they put this in here. So if you get down to you have one more day and it's not done, I personally would do an addendum for an extension and our extension clearly says on it for financing period to be extended. There's actually a box on that extension that says that. Okay, great. Okay. Ask Thank for you. more time. Otherwise, your buyer could be at risk for losing their deposit. So mm -hmm. um, it's meant to tighten up the reason. And if you look at the examples that they used in here, it's to tighten up our contracts. So it's just not indefinite amount of time. So, you know, you just, everybody needs to stay in touch. And again, make sure everything is in writing. Uh, that's the thing that they emphasize the most is make sure everything is in writing. No texting to the other agent, no, no um, just make sure everything is in writing. And if you do need an extension, you get down to that last date, ask for the extension and, okay. um, and let the title company, the people that need to be in constant contact are the title closing agent, the underwriter, the buyer and the seller. Uh, the agents are, you need to be involved too, but at the point, it's out of your control at this point. So those four people need to be in contact, title agent closing, the underwriter, and the buyer and seller. It's very, very important. Okay. And that, if, if you don't mind, can I chime in real quick? Yes. Especially since I deal with this all the time. Yeah. One thing I, I learned real early on in this business, it's not what you say, it's what you don't say that can mm -hmm. get you in a lot of trouble. Yeah. And look, these deals, there's never a perfect transaction. And if there are, there's very yeah. few and far between. So one of the biggest things that I realized, as much as we are, are you know, uh, experienced realtors, or I'm, you can call a senior loan officer or whatever, at the end of the day, we are expectation managers. That's what we, that what we do. And I find that the most important thing is Staying in communication, just exactly what Nanette was saying, that's the most important thing that will mitigate any situation and really make everybody feel at ease, especially the seller when they're representing the, or the listing agent representing the seller, they're accountable, they, you know, and what happens when people get real frustrated, that's when, as Bobby says, the proverbial, the shit hits a fan. So that's my uh, little nugget of uh, info on that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thanks a lot. Questions? Um, I'm not sure we can even change these effects. I think Mindy has a question. Yes, I have a question about PACE. Well, two questions. So okay. now the appraisal, hi Nanette, how are you? Hi everyone. Um, so the appraisal is no longer a contingency on their contract. I came in a little late, I'm sorry, I was at a showing. So, on the the appraisal has to be included in the finance period so that, that they have made sure that all of that's in there. Appraisers are, and Joe probably can jump in on this too, appraisers are three, four weeks behind right now, people that I know. So it, you just want to make sure that, you're, you're, that it's covered underneath your financing. So it's not that it doesn't matter, but the person needs to make sure that they're either approved or they're not approved. And that's the bottom line. They tried to tighten up the financing period. So um, if, if they have to have, um, if they don't have the money to pay the difference, or if they don't have other means of other fine, uh, whatever other means they're going to be to do, it has to be um, done within that time period again. So if they need the appraisal to appraise, obviously, if they don't have the extra funds, then, then obviously, you know, they're going to have to either cancel the contract within that time to retain, move on. But if, if they don't have the appraisal and that sepsis, then um, they're going to lose their deposit. So you yeah, just and, and, and with, as far as the lenders aspect, we are held, we make sure that the appraisers 
are held to an SLA, which is a service level agreement, where they have to mm-hmm. actually, you know, respond within a certain period of time. If, mm-hmm. uh, otherwise, they're off the list. So they uh, they realize. And what are you finding, is of Joe? What are you finding on appraisals right now with the mortgages? The time period <laughs> getting better than it has in the last year. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of background, but yeah, you know, um, surprisingly, it's not is that bad. Um, I know that our agent, or at least our uh, appraisers, are again reaching out to the listing agent within a couple of days to get cool. to schedule the appointment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Excellent. So, mm-hmm. That's perfect. Thank you so much. Next question was um, about pace. Um, could you, because I, I didn't, the voice cut out while you were explaining it, so I didn't understand what the pace meant. addendum, the pace. <laughs> That's the same thing as the CDD when you buy a new construction that you have that additional tax? Uh, well, yes, because uh, if the property was purchased with PACE, if it was purchased, then the, the new buyer has to know that because uh, somebody has to pay for that. And sometimes they, so for instance, they put on a roof or they put on windows or they put in hurricane things that is now rolled into their loan uh, that they still, they have to, I don't know if any of those things were done, that is going to be included in that payoff. So that's part of it. So that's a seller's uh, uh, issue. So you'd only use that PACE addendum if you had a seller that had a property that was a PACE property, basically. And my buyer, because when my buyer purchased a new construction, can you stop making noise, please? When my buyer purchased a new construction, um, they went ahead and they, they signed an addendum for the CDD and it was about uh, I don't know, nineteen thousand yes. um, dollars. I told them to pay it off as quickly as possible so it doesn't extend the the length of the of the loan. So. Right, and and sometimes uh, honestly, buyers are are confused with this. They think, oh, it's just rolled into the loan, or they're not going to have to pay, or they say, oh, it's included because you're going to get a credit or something on it. They just have to be very careful and read all of their documents when they're buying those properties because. They don't want any surprises. They're going to have their loan pay off and they realize, hey, this 90,000 has been added to my loan and it's going to come out of their proceeds. So, it, you know, it is it is an issue if something has been added to their mortgage. Um, they just need to be aware of it. Thank you so much. On the addendum, if you get the addendum and you read that addendum, it's very, very clear uh, what it says. It just is an acknowledgement that it was a PACE owned property and that they are going to be responsible, the seller responsible for that extra, the extra funds of that, that if they had something done, either that, like I said, it's usually hurricane windows, a new roof or, you know, upgrades for uh, uh, AC units, et cetera, clean air um, apartments and condos, homes, things like that. So it does add on to what their payoff is going to be. You don't want any surprises at closing is what it's basically is. You don't want any surprises for the seller, um, you know, that it's going to come out of their proceeds if they haven't paid it off. So. And then we have a question. Um, how should you document delivery of documents if the client requests a in-person delivery and does not have an email? They don't have an email. Um, facts. I mean, as bad as it is, everybody can go to uh, um, Office Depot or they can go to somewhere to get a computer. They can fax something. So it, it should be definitely just don't do it by text because, you know, they clearly said text is not going to hold up and text disappear. And that's why. So um, I would do it, you know, in person. You can't do it in person if they're far away, but you can probably do it by fax if they don't have an email. But um somehow they need to get it to them to make sure that it's valid. So, And you can also use a London Foster office if you do need to use a fax. You don't have to always go to an office depot. Feel free oh, to yeah, Kendall, definitely. Aventura, Miami Beach, yeah. Weston, or West Palm. You can use our offices as well. Bobby does not charge anything. That's a tough one, people. though. I mean, I know if you're in uh, another country or something and they don't have access to something that that can be difficult but you know it's um even if it's hand delivered i think that i would have it signed on on the um form simplicity just so you guys know all these documents are on form simplicity and we have a on form simplicity a receipt of document form that's there 
So it's usually for condo documents that you receive the condo documents, but you can uh, basically use that receipt of documents that they've received the documents and have them sign it somehow and date it. It needs to be signed and dated somewhere. All right. Um, any, <clears throat> excuse me. Does anyone else have any questions here? Can you email a screenshot of a text for me? Someone said, can you email a screenshot of a text confirming the change or information? Why would you do that? So, I mean, I don't think that, no, because the text, just don't forget about text. You can't do anything on your contract by text. That's why they put it in there three or four times. They just don't want anything on text. Text, you can't tell where they're coming from sometimes. You just, it, it just, they just said no to text. So but I would say no to that question. Okay. And then text um, period are not. So why would you put yourself in that situation? I wouldn't do it. I just uh, when in doubt, don't do it. Text is just not admitted. And um, Omar, it, you're still here in the room. So if, if you still have the question, um, he asked to go over the appraisal clause changes again, please. But that was earlier, that was early in presentation. So Omar, if you still need her to, to review that, we're more than happy to. But if you did, this is Bernie. I had the same question. So yes. Yeah. Okay. Can you just go over it again. Specifically, it's, what is the question? Well, I mean, it, it what is it that, that what, what was it that good morning? What was it that was changed? The fact that sometimes the appraisals didn't come in until everything was already done. And this has to do again with the financing. Joe can probably uh, speak to this. Um, because we had a delay on some appraisals and they weren't getting done, you get the appraisals when you're three quarters of the way ready to close. So what they're trying to do is make sure that within the financing period, sometimes after the finance and the loan has been approved, they didn't have an appraisal uh, on time or something. So it wasn't uh, worked into the documents. So now they're just trying to get the appraisal up front in the process and not at the end or behind the process to make sure everything is included on the property, Pro you know, that, that you can close properly and the appraisal is there. Um, so that was the bottom line. And, and honestly, they give it um, instruction on why they did it was to tighten up the whole process and to make sure it was done in a timely fashion because the appraisals were not supposedly being done on time and they didn't have them um, in order for the whole process to be completed within the 30 days. So again, as far as an appraisal, if you know your appraisal hasn't been done and they're running behind on the appraisal, ask for an extension because they need, the underwriter needs the appraisal, the appraisal needs the uh, documents from the financing people to do their work. So. Okay. Can you clarify your statement you. Reg regarding I, I felt I thought you'd also said something about um, termination and the appraisal. So could you just review that again? About what? Termi a term ter termination is um, no longer like the buyer may not have the option anymore to terminate just because it doesn't appraise. Could you just review that so I can make sure I understood you clearly? So on the beginning of the contract, when they said it's uh, on... Let me find that part, not assignability, it's right under assignability. We now, they took that part out of the contract. So um, we used to be able to do cash. So remember how it was written, how you do cash or they do financing as part of it. They just eliminated that part of it. So it's either an all cash deal or the loan, it's a loan, right, approved. And they have different kinds of loans now that are just not based on appraisals. So, and again, this may be a question for Joe, because they say they added language in there that said things other than a traditional loan. So basically, if they, the bottom line is if people do not have a loan, a final loan approval on it, then they're at risk for losing their deposit. If, if they go forward and they don't have the loan, then it's going to be considered cash. So. Right. So, okay, so if I... Oh, sorry. I, 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 th I believe it's clearing it up where the appraisal is one thing and the loan approval is another, okay? Uh -huh. where, uh, and and it, it, there was a lot of questions and it wasn't clear in the previous contract where if you got the loan approval and let's say it's a $500,000 transaction and the appraisal comes in at $400,000, 
okay? Then you could go back and say, well, I did not get the appraisal at four, um, at the price that it needs to come in for me to get the loan that I was originally expected and disclosed to get. So now, instead of getting a loan for, let's say, 480000 I'm going to get a loan for 380000 because the appraised value came in at 400000 and not 500000 So they can say, well, and now right there is, can be interpreted as, oh, I didn't get the loan that I had applied for, so therefore I want to get a denial and back out of the transaction. Or that could be interpreted as, no, you still got approved. The only thing is, is that the appraisal didn't get, you, know, you didn't get the appraisal. So you can still get a loan. You just got to put more money down. So before the previous contract, it was looked at as, okay, you know, that could be a reason to back out of the transaction. Whereas now it's been more clear that the appraisal is not, and, and, and am I right in saying this? Um, Lynette, because it doesn't automatically terminate the contract anymore. But what happens if your client contract. doesn't want to yeah. do the difference in cash? Well, that's why it has to be addressed up front during the uh, um, contract period. Okay, so where would that be addressed exactly? Because if you click on the financing part that mm -hmm. you're going to do conventional or FHA, like where do you put that that like so basically that contingency no longer exists like as automatic as an automatic termination of not going forward you have some people that may want to pay and some people that don't so the people who don't what is the protection for them or what needs to be done for them? i've done that at the end of the contract as this contract i write clearly in in a legal term that a, a lender gave me and it says there my buyer will pay x amount of dollars for this property and has x amount of dollars in cash and will not go above this price it's right there on the contract from the very beginning where 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 in the contract and the is this contract. different than an escalation clause so in the last page in the uh, where you sign and it oh, 591? Like, underneath the addendums. She, underneath the addendums is the area she's talking about. <laughs> okay. She writes an additional yeah, contract right, to protect her buyer. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, can someone um, post some of that sample language? Okay. I'll look for yeah. yeah for sure. I, I, can, I can write you something. I can, I can send something to you. Just generally, it says... Uh, buyer and seller agree, and you always want to put buyer and seller agree. Buyer and seller agrees that buyer will um, will contribute so much to close it too much toward the purchase price of the um, without going over ten thousand dollars. It's whatever the contract is. Say, for instance, there are a lot of people that just use the appraisal process. I think this is why this came up. There are a lot of people that just use the appraisal in order to cancel. They don't want that anymore. They don't want the people's property to be off. The, uh, the market, they want to make things simpler for people. So uh, a lot of people did use the appraisal. If it didn't appraise, you just cancel and move on and you get your money back. They're trying to avoid that situation, I believe. And they're trying to um, make people um, just know that it, this is a legal document. You're going into this. You want to buy the property. You can either get your financing or you don't. So it makes people um, a little bit more honest about the property that they're buying, so to speak. So um, that you can write that in there. Buyer and seller agree that buyer agrees to pay, for instance, ten thousand dollars above appraisal price, or you know, whatever above. You you can write that right on. But they both have to agree to it. Um, it, it you know, if you have a property that's a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand, no matter what price range it's in, you know, should a, a person really be buying that property or not is the question. And if you know that the comps are not there. Um, and you know the loan approval you right. got for the person exactly. is, is what it is. So exactly. this, this all boils down to just doing what we're supposed to do within the timelines. If 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 um, this is addressed within the 30, 45, 60 day financing timeline, then there's there's no issues because this is addressed. <laughs> the reason why they're trying to make it a little bit more specific is because 
you know, it's a week before closing, uh, you know, nothing has been addressed and, you know, all of a sudden people are scrambling and, oh, the appraisal didn't come in or this or that. No one's communicating. You know, that's the issue. Okay. So as long as everyone's doing what they're supposed to be doing and staying uh, updated and being proactive, proactive is the key. And, you know, the, the, this really won't even be an issue because everything will already be addressed. Right. Well, not, to not show the changes, in a nutshell, these changes is forced transparency. <laughs> exactly. Uh -huh. Agreed. Does okay. that answer your question? Um, yeah, yes, I guess you. what we're saying is in line 91, like right below where you can click off, you would put this statement and it would be something that the buyer and seller both initial. Um, uh -huh. But I'd still love to see some saying some sample language to you. Okay. Even though I heard what you said. Yeah, we'll get that to you. Uh -huh. Thank you. Sure. Okay, let's try to move move on. I, I, I don't know if we have any more time for questions right now, but if you want to continue. That's it. So we're finished, Bobby. That's it with the as okay. is. That's all the changes. And again, this information doesn't come from London Foster. It comes from the Florida, um, although it's on our website, we have it on londonfoster.net under our education tab. So you can go to londonfoster.net go under education and it's listed as the as is contract. And also if you use form simplicity, they have everything uploaded as of November 1st, it's on form simplicity. You should no longer use your other contracts because this is done by the state of Florida and the Florida Bar Association. Again, the date is in the lower left-hand corner. It'll say revised 10-21-2021 by Florida Realtors and the Bar. So, um, and this uh, just goes to the as is contract. There is another contract obviously that is not with um, inspection that is out there and they made some changes to it too. But for the most part, we generally to protect your buyers and sellers, we use the as is moving forward. Uh, Bobby, do you, is that the only one you want us to use? Um, Oh, yeah, yeah. The, the as is, is is the one that we default to unless right. they specifically ask. Just like we are always transaction brokers, unless they specifically ask to be a single agent. That's very important and really understand that and know if, if you're listing a property, see, make sure that you're using the one that I, I believe it's section 10, um, that you are a transaction broker. So um, make sure you're using those contracts. And yes, the as is is always the best one because it's simple, plain. You know, you get so much of a better understanding with the as is contract than you do with the crisp contract. And it, it's it's relatively, you're gonna go through the same process anyway. So um, yeah, for sure, the as is contract is always the best, I think, to default to unless they ask for some another contract specifically. Right, I really appreciate everybody being on board and joining us today. Um, this is gonna be online. The presentation is again from the state of Florida and it has every, all the changes are redlined. So if you print it out for yourself, which I don't know if anybody prints any longer, but print it in color. So you'll see the changes in red. Um, so um, anybody else have anything? Hopefully we'll see you all tonight at the happy hour with Joe and uh, near the Aventura office at bar 42. So, tap, 40. <laughs> tap 42. Right. At the, uh, tap 42. Tap 42. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so again, I appreciate everybody being on here and thanks Bobby. Thanks Memo. Thanks Joe. Thanks. Um, to Daniel, everybody here. Thanks, Lynette. We'll give you a round of applause for that oh, great, you. amazing, you know, uh, very helpful um, and proactive uh, 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 um, you know, speak and talk about addressing the changes of the uh, contracts because I'm glad that we're doing this now. It was relatively recently that they made these contract that they made these changes, and it's good that we're doing it now as opposed to waiting a couple of months down the line and then. You know, being like, what are you talking about? You know, this, of course, you're not going to memorize everything that Nanette had explained right now, but it's going to stay in your head and you're going to go over it again and, you know, another time. So you'll be, uh, you know, familiar with it. And that's, that's the key to be familiar with it very early, like we're doing now. And, and, you know, like Lynette said, this is going to be on the back, on the back office. It's, it's um, the video here, the slides are going to be there as well. So you can, you know, read this in your free time. It's really important to become familiar with the changes. That's what separates, you know, one agent from another is the proactiveness, if they're going to be uh, aware of the changes and if they're, you know, 
up with the latest news. So um, uh, again, thank you, Lynette. Um, we really appreciate it. Thank you everyone for joining us and asking the, the, these questions. Um, it's good that we get through these questions. Uh, the easy questions, the tough questions, it's good that we talk about it and, um, and, and, and you know, uh, brainstorm about it. Because the funny thing is, is that even it, it, with contracts, no matter how much they update it, I'm always talking to attorneys. So I'll ask an attorney about um, uh, what, what, what does this mean on a contract? And they'll tell me one thing. And I'll ask another attorney the same question to see, okay, is, is it true what the, the other attorney said? And he'll give you a totally different interpretation. You know, and these are attorneys that have been in the real estate business for a very long time. So yeah, and, and this is why we can't give legal advice because it's, 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 an, it's subject to interpretation. So, but we, we want to interpret it as best as we possibly can and for the benefit of our customers, you know, so this is, you know, it's important to understand that, um, but, you know, again, we don't need to be the attorneys writing up these contracts. We just need to help our age, our customers with guiding them through the contract. You know, we cannot advise them why well, I advise you to do this, to do that, because this will always, always come back to bite us in the ass. And so this is, uh, um, uh, it's very important to know. So thanks again, everyone for coming out. Um, I don't know if Memo is still on, uh, but yeah. uh, Joe, okay, Joe, Joe's going to have, um, we're having uh, 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 the, the uh, happy hour tonight. Uh, what time does it start, Joe? It's from four to seven, but hey, if you guys want to stay a little longer, you're more than welcome to. It's going to okay. be a good time, guys. Looking forward to seeing all you guys there. Awesome. Awesome. So uh, thanks, Joe. Appreciate it for having the, the happy hour. It always uh, is it's a fun time. And um uh, you know, I look forward to seeing you guys uh, there and also keep in mind, you know, that we have that uh, till the end of the year, we have that special that if you guys refer us any uh, agents, because we would like to, we would rather be referred agents from the agents that we have as, you know, it's much better to have more people closer to the family as opposed to, you know, new agents, but hey, we, we welcome everyone. Um, but we would, you know, it would be great and we want to show our appreciation by giving you um, that special deal, it's $200. You don't have to wait till your next tr transaction. You get $200 cash. Um, you know, it's just something to show our appreciation. So uh, we appreciate all the referrals of agents that you guys sent to us. And any questions or anything, you have my contact number. You have Memo's contact number. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I wish everyone the best. And we'll talk and I'm to you. Sure, and I'm sure, Bobby, you'll be sending the information about the uh, Christmas party soon, right? <laughs> yes, we're up to, uh, a mass email you guys will see. It's going to be on December 15th, I believe. It's going to be either that Wednesday or that Thursday. We're locking everything in now. So, um, um, so more uh, good news to come. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. So, you know, it's just, it's, it's just a time to reflect and enjoy our time and celebrate a little bit since we work so hard. It's just time. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a good time for us to celebrate. Um, the other thing I just wanted to mention was that actually, uh, Bernie, I think that that was a good idea that you said as far as... Um, sending you over the wording. And that kind of made me think, what I want to do actually is I want to put some wording samples on our back office of very common situations like what you're asking for now. There's probably about 10 other ones that we can put on there and exactly how to word them. So we'll put that on our back office. Uh, it's a good idea. I think that we'll, we'll, we'll put that on there and say, in case you have this scenario, here's a possible uh, uh, a way to word word it, whether you're dealing with seller concession or appraisal values or anything like that. So we'll put that on the back, off, uh, back office. Thanks for that idea. Okay. Um, and uh, Elaine is saying that uh, the New Year's party has to be in New York City. <laughs> as soon as our New York office gets off the ground and, and gets uh, uh, bigger than it is, um, I believe we have about 15 agents in New York. Um, we'll definitely have a, a New Year's Eve party in New York. Okay. But um, besides that, thank you everyone for coming and, um, um, you know, uh, uh, make sure you uh, uh, keep in touch with us. And uh, if you have any questions, reach out to us. Uh, have a great day and uh, talk to you soon. See you guys tonight at TAP 42. See you guys thank there. You guys. Thanks, Lynette. Thanks, Bobby. Thanks. Thank you. Bye-bye.